hello everyone good morning good afternoon um to everyone uh i will like the, the main goal today it is trying to bring like more like the awareness how you can create like the best practice uh with the mood cloud approach right when you were talking about the cloud governance and operational excellence I have like so many organizations asking us like this kind of things after uh, some conversations, right? And I try to make like a very uh, simple uh, way where you can start in the first steps by steps with the best practice. In the end, I will be also uh, sharing a little bit of um, uh, one article that is very um, uh, built based in this presentation and you've feel free to read those. And if you have any questions, please uh, reach me out. I'm uh, Fernando Cardoso, one of the solutions architect uh, for AWS Alliance at Trend Micro. And let's just start the presentation. <clears throat> the first piece here, it is just like uh, mentioning about like uh, the three major cloud builders, right? Every single time when we talk about cloud migration, it is very common for us to remember about like a shift and lift, right? It is just like grabbing uh, the regular virtual machines or physical servers and migrating them to the cloud. Very common association with the cloud migration, but you have like a lot of other different cases where you can work with the hybrid data centers, multi cloud infrastructure, and uh, the, the regular monolithic migration to uh, of the apps. When you talk about like um, cloud native applications, right? Companies are starting building and looking for what we call CNCF, like a uh, landscape, right? Uh, you starting looking for Kubernetes, Docker, uh, GRCP, um, and many other um, like technologies that you can find inside the CNCF uh, landscape, like a harbor for registries and all those kind of things. And when you starting building uh, applications using those kind of like uh, platforms or softwares or tools, you start creating more like a cloud native applications. You start using like serverless containers, microservices, and all this new method of like uh, building and running your applications, right? Very robust because you can start in getting those regular monolithic application and breaking down in like uh, microservices where if one area fails, it is very easy for you to like recover. Plus it's, it's much easier for you to update those applications in the new platforms that you are creating. And the last piece here, it is the most important from today, right? The governance and operational excellence. And when we talk about this, I like to remember three major areas, right? The governance, risk, compliance, and operational excellence. They try to mix a little bit all these areas together in the uh, go, uh, cloud governance and operation excellence, but it is very popular. I, and I see the, the most requested things in this area it is the risk and compliance, right? So many, so many organizations, they try to like uh, do the cloud migration or the cloud native applications building process. And they try to follow their regular uh, compliance, like a PCI DSS, HIPAA compliance, high trust, NIST 853, ISO 27001, right? And so many others. Plus, you have the regular governance inside your organizations that you try to follow or use those standards and frameworks most common in the market to, me to meet with your uh, regulations or internal governance that you have in your uh, organizations. When we go a little bit further, here's the top five configurations failures. When we talk about cloud governance, configurations and misconfigs are very, very important, right? And this is like a very common and sim simple cases where uh, storage access is being open to the internet, secrets uh, management, they are not encrypted, disable logging or monitoring, for example, you are creating storage systems in the cloud or you are creating um, um, Kubernetes clusters, how you are monitoring, are you logging all these informations about like creating and destroying new containers? Are you sending all this information to like a syslog or a CM that you can save for like over six months or a year, depending how the compliance is requesting you, right? All those informations are very, very important. Uh, overly permissive access to the hosts, containers, and virtual machines. And the last one, lack of validation, right? Like how you can make sure 
you are making the validation in the pipeline that you are building. When we talk about like a cloud native application, it is very common you create like a CI CD pipelines for every single application that you are building in different squads, right? And uh, um, I brought like here a very important statement from Gartner where they say through 2023, at least 99% of cloud security failures will be the customer fault. And when they say that, it is because when you when you look for um, like any cloud provider, they have the share responsibility, right? And they, they have like specifically areas that it is the customer uh, responsibility of like managing security, patching and all those kind of things. And there are so many areas that customers need to have like specifically configurations around like uh, uh, specifically storage systems, uh, microservices, serverless applications. And those misconfigurations are like the most uh, common mistakes from a lot of customers today. And Gartner mentioned too, like through 2024, organizations will be deploying CSPM technologies, and this is basically cloud secure posture management technologies, right? To bring this awareness and starting reducing the misconfigurations around security incidents and security mistakes uh, in the cloud providers. In I brought like this uh, specifically statement when we talk about uh, governance and operational excellence, right? The cloud offers immutable benefits for your organizations and business. As long as you have the right policies and guardrails to protect it from possible mistakes or misconfigurations in the cloud services. Uh, I put this in one of my articles and I think it is very um, important to remember you can create whatever you want in the cloud, but it's very, very important for you to define the policies and the guardrails to start in protecting and bring them be better visibility about what you are building and creating in those cloud providers, right? And here I try to put like uh, some important areas for you to bring some awareness to, right? How can organizations create a cloud governance and operational excellence strategy? The first piece here that I believe it is very, very important, it is the awareness and visibility, right? Organi organization needs to be aware about like their applications, about what their cloud teams are creating or destroying or processing in the cloud. Security risk across multi cloud platforms, but not just cloud platforms, right? But your regular data centers are very, very important. And all these things are like, um, being built around like a ci cd pipelines this is a very uh simple example about like uh, developers pushing code to the git repository and you have a ci cd technologies with gitlab github actions or jenkins or circle ci and so many others where you are pushing your uh, code or creating your applications in aws azure or gcp but like how do you make sure these pipelines, or do you have any awareness or visibility around this pipeline? Do you collect specifically telemetrics informations about like uh, how many mis uh, configurations are being pushed uh, to production? Like, are you reading the cloud formation templates or Terraform templates before you created those infrastructures? Um, are you scanning every single container image before you push your production in a Kubernetes cluster and all these kind of things? Because those are very, very, very like a regular mistakes that it is happening in the market today, right? In many organizations, and it will be very important for you to starting adding some kind of like security layers or security um, tools integrated in your pipelines to bring this awareness and visibility. And this is a very simple pipeline, right? But imagine you have a major applications or many applications using this high availability module, right? Where you create like um, different zones or different regions in AWS or Azure or GCP. And you start creating like many applications in those environments. It is so hard for you to start in monitoring when you have like many pipelines and many squads pushing uh, new applications and new solutions to cloud providers, and you don't have this visibility in the pipeline, right? There are so many technologies today in the market, and Cloud One Conform is one of those that you can bring like a very nice way to help you with the compliance information, right? With like a, some visibility where you are failing. 
which is specifically pillars from like AWS Web Architecture Framework or Azure Web Architecture Framework you are failing, like in the security, cost optimization, operational excellence, reliability, and performance efficiency. Those are very important areas, not just to help the security teams, but to help them cloud architect, DevOps engineers, uh, product managers from applications, and many others, right, to bring more uh, um, awareness about like what is happening compared with the best practice uh, frameworks in the market. I don't know if uh, is there are any questions here. I will keep my eyes on the questions and Ron, please let me know if there is some too. I like to, to answer on the fly, but um, uh, looks like don't have. Yep, let's keep going. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, and when we go to the next step here is to establish and maintain uh, security, right? Like I mentioned before, the shared uh, security responsibility module, it is applied for like every single cloud provider. This is an image from Microsoft, right? Um, and it, it's, it's important to remember that security should be considered a shared responsibility if one is to keep data safe in the cloud, right? Um, you, like, it is very important to understand that like a lot of uh, the security areas in infrastructure, it is the cloud provider responsibility, right? But there are so many areas like application level controls or identity and access management, uh, client and endpoint protection or sorry, uh, data classification and accountability, they are like most of the time um, like customer responsibilities, right? They have like a half and a half in depending which case you are. And as uh, Microsoft was mentioning before, right? PaaS or SaaS technologies from them reduce a lot of the heavy lift about like uh, the controls and the configurations that customers need to do because you are basically reducing the level of the uh, cloud customer's responsibility, right? It is very important to uh, understand this kind of like a matrix, right? For you to look to the right uh, point and how you can increase your security layers compared with the responsibilities that you have based in the services that you use in the cloud, right? And, um, and a, a, a third point here that's very important, some people forget to do this, right? It is to classify and structure your data. They have like so many like um, frameworks and regulations across the globe, right? GDPR is a good example, CCPA here in California, L, uh, GPD in Brazil, like all these like regulations, they are trying to protect the users, right? and the regular consumers from like uh, your uh, applications organizations. And the main idea here is like uh, you need to starting classifying the data that you have in your applications because if any of those customers from these countries or from a specific state are requesting those data to delete or to view or to like um, um, collect those informations, you need to have this structure pretty well for you to give to them, right? Uh, it's very important when you are building new applications and you are saving data in the cloud, please start in making a, a, a good uh, classification and the structure of like the data from your customers, right? Uh, the next one is like a controlled and management access, right? I put like some uh, specifically pieces that I believe it would be important when you are planning the management access, like how you can plan the work, implementation, and maintenance, right? It is very important for you to always um, start to work with the least privileged access, right? Um, and starting allowing access for specific applications or services in the cloud providers with the time, with the right validations for every single user. Don't try to enable everything to them because a lot of problems can happen, right? Uh, remember a very important piece, it is enabling the MFA. I think Microsoft was mentioning about their uh, Microsoft Authenticator, right? Where you can have inside the mo modal phones and um, just to generate the tokens, or sometimes you can accept and logging specifically access to their platforms in Azure and uh, also in a couple other systems from Microsoft. Uh, but those MFAs are very important to increase the level of like access uh, for confidentiality 
and um, identification from the users from specific applications, right? Try to add those specific things that will help you uh, creating a much better structure of like, management access. Uh, your cost uh, in the cloud, right? So many organizations today, sometimes they start immigrating a lot of workloads and starting spending more than they have before in the data center because they are too open. Any Anyone can start creating like uh, EC2s or virtual machines and all those kind of things. Control, uh, controlled access can help you with that, right? Like uh, making sure who you have the, the, the access to build like a new uh, virtual machines or EC2s, they are very, very important aspects, but also making sure and have like a broad visibility about like IDO EC2s, reserve it instance that you are like uh, being inspired and use it EBS and use it like a RDS and many other things that can increase your cost drastically, right, in the cloud. There are many like um, apps and um, solutions today in the market. What I would recommend for you to uh, to look a little bit in deeper, but if you want to like a very robust technology for uh, application uh, cost, right, transparency, would be Aptio uh, and Cloudine. Those are, those are very good technologies around the management cost. Um, our technology, for example, today, conformity, we have like a specific pillar uh, that we can bring some visibilities around this specific topics that I mentioned here. We help a lot of organizations with this. Uh, just a, a little um, information here, like we, we help like organizations before where they were spending like $10,000 over because uh, the unused EBS and use it uh, like RDS and EC choose and we have them with like a bringing visibility and they could reduce uh, the cost in like ten thousand dollars in a month just because the over like usage of like a specific instance that could be reduced the size of the instance and a couple other resources in the cloud um, for a better um, management perspective right um with that i like to like just remember right finding tuning it's frequently it's important to achieve balance and the desired risk tolerance for your organization with respect to access control data privacy cost security and compliance those are very important areas and i see a lot of organizations sometimes they starting uh creating all of these uh, methods with like a classification data um management access and maintaining security but they do this one time and after they forget they say like oh it's all set up i don't need to take the eyes on this right and this is completely wrong right do not set it and forget it right security is a very important aspect in the business and you need to always keep the eyes open technologies that can monitor your environment in real time and feed your devops engineers cloud architects with like a notification open ticket in their systems like jira service now uh, pager duty right or slack channels they are very very important for you to the, to keep the eyes open about any specific risk or like a, a drift as associated with the best practice right um it's very important to understand that like a bring a visibility around like a AWS Web Architecture Framework or Azure Web Architecture Framework can help your organization not to achieve a better security, right? But a, a better like um, a way to be running your applications, a more um, false tolerance applications, a more like a operational uh, uh, applications that can save you a lot of money in the future but also can accelerate the process how you are building and uh, creating like new features for them right those are very important aspects 